All right, guys. Chaos is his nickname, but this week he emerged as the hero. Maybe U.S. didn't need, but the U- the hero that the U.S. got, the great American saving machine. He put his hand in the air to fight Tyron Woodley at the now cancelled UFC London card on six days' notice. Six days' and notice. The fight didn't go ahead, but he joins us here today, back on Submission Radio. Colby Covington, why does it feel like it's been too long since you've been on Submission Radio? I know it's it's been way too long, but you know I'm glad to be back on Submission, making it great again today. Always appreciate you coming on the show, Colby. Uh, man, gotta ask, what have the last few days been like for you? I imagine uh, absolute roller coaster ride. Yeah, it's it's been uh, complete chaos, you know, just like my nickname, hmm. you know, from. From accepting a fight on six days' notice, thinking I'm fighting six days, to, you know, the world pretty much shutting down with this pandemic going on with the coronavirus. So, man, it's been crazy. But, you know, you know, I just try and keep a level head through it all. And uh, I'm going to come back and save the UFC and save the sports world and save ESPN one day. But, you know, it just sucks that I got robbed this weekend. You know, I had something special brewing. Been training really hard the last couple of weeks in American Top Team. And, uh, you know, I was going to put on a show. I was going to end – uh, Tyron Woodley's career in fashion. Mm. We want to get to all of that and really go through all the details. But first, I want to touch on this kind of roller coaster ride that you've had with fans. Um, you know, after you fight with Usman, it seemed like a lot of fans were sort of down on you. And then after you put your hand up this week, it's a little bit like that roller coaster where everybody's going back up and everybody's big on Colby Covington, calling you the hero, the savior. What do you kind of make of this relationship that you have with the public? Uh, you know, I just make the, you know, I'm here for the public. All the fans know that I deliver for them. You know, I'm, I'm putting on an entertaining show for them year round and I'm just trying to make their lives better. I'm trying to be the light in the darkness right now. Yeah, it's a dark time. There's some shitty times going right now, but you know what? There's some good things that we can look at and we can look at perspective and I'm trying to be that, that solid perspective that, that makes people's lives better. Whether you want to come and talk shit about me, oh, you're the worst fighter, oh, you're fake, you're this and that, or if you want to love me, either way, you're going to be entertained, and I'm going to give you something to talk about. Mm. We know how much work he put into actually getting that title shot from the promotion stuff that you did, trying to build up that Woodley fight, eventually getting that Usman fight, and obviously things didn't go your way, and then, you know, there was all that criticism from fans about, you know, how this and that and the performance and the way it got finished i'm just wondering how did you sort of how did you manage to get through that sort of low period in your life we imagine you're a guy that doesn't get affected by much but what was it was it a difficult time for you after that fight no i just i thought about all my hard-working fellow americans and, and i thought about when they had to face adversity and and sometimes life isn't fair and that's exactly what happened on december 14th life was not fair for me i had a fake ref I had fake uh, fouls called in the fight. I had a fake finish. It wasn't a real fight. But, you know, just like the American will and spirit, it, our will and spirit cannot be broken. So, you know, I'm coming back from Artie Fake Newsman. He can keep running. He can keep hiding, looking for these easy f- fights with jobbers. But eventually we're going to get locked in that cave for 25 more minutes. And then there's going to be 25 more minutes when I end his career in, in the trilogy fight. So, you know, I just need a level playing field, you know. The best thing that's came out of this coronavirus is that they put a travel ban on the UK. Keep that shitty ass piece of shit rap Mark Not So Gooder over in the UK because he fucking sucks at his job and he needs a fucking new job because he doesn't know how to fucking officiate. Wow. Um, let, let, let's unpack sort of this past week for you, Colby. Uh, when did you first hear that the UFC London card was in trouble? And when did the UFC approach you about this card? Was it them that approached you or did you approach them? They approached me, and uh, but if they hadn't approached me about five minutes later, I was about to approach them because I had first heard of you know the cancellation on Saturday night, like late night, and I was like, hmm, I wonder how things are going to change. You know, Dana said he was going to move it from London to America, and I am America's champ and the people's champ, so you know it's only fitting that I come and save America, and save the people live on ESPN. So you know, Saturday night. Sunday night, Sunday morning rolls around and the UFC calls me, hey, are you interested in fighting Woodley, you know, maybe on an Indian reservation in California, maybe Oklahoma, maybe Alabama. I'm like, absolutely. I'm in. Count me in. You know, I've been training. I'm in great shape. You know, two months ago, I was with Cam Haynes 
you know, starting my training camp on the mountains, getting that endurance up with the best endurance athlete in the world. So I feel very ready for this moment. And then, you know, all of a sudden Monday rolls around and, and Trump puts the ban that, you know, no more uh, large gatherings of 10 people or more. And, and once that came to fruition, we knew that the fight was going to get canceled Monday night. And that's when it ended up happening, you know. So it was a roller coaster from thinking I'm fighting on Sunday, you know, the next day, uh, late night, thinking, you know, shit, I lost this big opportunity to go when no other sports are playing. Uh, nothing else is going on in the world. You know, people need safe. They need some entertainment in their lives. And I was ready to come be that for them. And I got robbed of that opportunity. So, you know, I, I'm just, just kind of devastated and a little bit hurt right now. Mm. Let's just get into that negotiation as well, because we know you had some issues with the UFC when you were negotiating that Usman title fight. They didn't really offer you a deal that you were happy with initially. What's your relationship like with Dana White and the UFC now? And did they come with a deal that you found acceptable? Yeah, our relationship's fine. Uh, they understand who uh, the numbers are in this business and, and who's doing big numbers and doing good business for them. So, you know, that's all I've ever tried to do for this company is, is put this company before myself. Look at me. I was willing to go fight on six days notice to save this company, to save the show, to save ESPN, to save everybody, to save America and all the people around the world, all the fans watching, you know. So, you know, now they see my worth and, and my willingness and readiness to save something and always be ready. I'm ready, man. You want to fight on one day's notice? Let's do it. Why is it that mm. I'm coming out? I'm ready to fight before Marty Fake Newsman. How, how did that happen? So, you know, everybody that wanted to be uh, these critics saying, oh, I broke my jaw. If I broke a jaw, how am I ready to fight two and a half months later on a week's notice if I broke my jaw? So I'm sick of the fake news out there. I'm sick of all these people trying to chase clout. I'm here to fight. And I'm here to make this sport great again. We remember you spoke to us a little bit about when you were frustrated with the UFC. You said, you know, you wanted out of your contract if they didn't sort of offer you what you deserved, that they didn't really appreciate you for what you bring to the table. At, at this moment, obviously, this time Woodley fight almost came together. But do you see yourself sticking around in the UFC for the rest of your career? Do you think they're going to be using you and appreciating you for the work that you've been doing? Or is there a possibility that not so long down, down the stretch, you might be in a different company that appreciates you more? Um, you know, I think with what's going on in the world right now, you know, it kind of relates, you know, it's, there's a, there's some correlation that there's really no way to predict, you know, what's going to happen next. All you can do is take it one day at a time, you know, keep believing, keep working hard and not panicking more importantly. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens next. You know, I love the UFC. I love being a part of the UFC. It's a great honor, but I'm also a businessman. I didn't come here to make friends. I came here to do business and, and if they don't want to do business, then that's okay. I can go somewhere else and do business too. But that's not going to change the fact who's the best welterweight in the world. That's myself. And no one's stopping me anytime soon. I'm young. I just got started. And you haven't seen the best of me yet. Every single time I step in that octagon, I get better. And nothing's going to change in the future. Mm. It, it, it took you so long to get that initial title shot. If they refuse to give you that title shot, let's say you go back out there against Tyron Woodley and you win, and they refuse to give you that title shot. Would that be something that would make you think about going somewhere else? Oh, uh, you know, it just it depends on how big the check was. It, it, if they're paying me title money, you know, I deserve title money. I'm a champion. I never lost my title. Everybody knows I had the world championship, America's uh, championship, Donald Trump's favorite fighter championship. <laughs> so everybody knows I'm, I, I'm the real champion in this division. I defended that title two times and. You know, all my other fights, they're all world title fights. So the biggest fights of magnitude that you can get. And, uh, you know, if the UFC doesn't see that worth and they don't want to pay up, you know, even a half a fraction of what I deserve, you know, because, you know, I, I, I put my whole life on this company, you know, went to Brazil when I had death threats and, and had, uh, you know, favelas that wanted a bounty on my head. I still was willing to go risk my life for this company. So the UFC should see, see that I'm, I'm willing to put it all on the line for this company and, and I deserve to be treated fairly. Uh, I'm just wondering, Colby, you sort of laid it out well for us, you know, what, what exactly happened, you know, in the negotiations and stuff like that. Um, but obviously Tyron Woodley came out and he claimed that, you know, you didn't accept the fight, that you were just, he, I think he claimed that you said you were just kidding when it came down to actually sort of signing. I was just wondering sort of what your side of the story was and what you thought about him, you know, coming out and saying that. I think that Tyron Woodley's doing what he always does. He's the CNN of the UFC. He's fake news. 
you can't believe anything Tyron Woodley says. The guy's so full of shit, his eyes are brown. I mean, it's, it's absolutely pathetic, the narratives that he tries to run out of his mouth. I mean, dude, the guy got backed in a corner. He was going to fight some no-name guy named Leon Scott. And then they were talking about him fighting some no-name dude named Dilbert. Like, Dilbert? What the fuck is a Dilbert? Dude, what, what, what are you talking about, Tyron Woodley? I begged to fight you. You've been begging not to fight me, so... You know, let's get the facts straight. I signed a contract. I was ready to fight you. You never signed a contract to fight me. You don't want to fight me. And he's talking about me chasing clout, looking for that fight. Bitch, I am the clout. I'm the numbers. Go look at the numbers. There's a reason nobody cares about Tyron Woodley anymore because he just spits few fake news. There's nothing real or truthful about him. At least I'm honest and I'm real. Yeah, you know what? I say some mean things sometimes. Yeah. I hurt some guys' feelings sometimes. I'm sorry. I'm a professional fighter in the professional fighting business, so I'm sorry if I hurt your your feelings, Marks. <laughs> uh, let me ask you this. I mean, you signed the contract. You wanted to fight Woodley. In your mind, is that the next fight that needs to happen once things get up and running again? Obviously, Leon Edwards is over there in the wings. The fight didn't happen. So in your mind, is it you versus Tyron Woodley next for whenever the UFC returns with the next card? No, it's it's not. It's it's me and Marty Fake Newsman round two. That motherfucker escaped after faking fouls in the fight, changing the momentum of the fight. I kicked him in the liver, and he was ready to quit in that second round. You could see it in his face. He took five minutes and faked a fucking nut shot, sat on the ground, you know, like a fake actor, acting like he really got his nuts hit. But actually, the camera showed, dude, you got hit, hit in the liver. And then his fake foul in the third round where he's faking an eye poke, he gets five minutes to recover. It's a complete momentum change. And then he pokes me in the eye, and Mark Goddard says, oh, no, no more timeouts. So he acknowledged he gave Marty Fake Newsman timeouts before that, and he still didn't give me a timeout. But that's okay, because I don't want any life rafts. I keep fighting through it all. And then the bullshit stoppage, the guy's hit me in the back of the head five or six times, and, and then you call a stop when I'm intelligently defending myself? Like, where's the, where's the consistency in the calls? You let Frankie Edgar die the next week, a legend, so Mark not so Goddard should honestly have his, his referees re provoke, revoke from him. He's, he's an incompetent ref. He shouldn't be out there. And any fighter out there, this is a message for all the pro fighters out there. If, if they talk about him being your ref, I mean, you might as well not show up because he's going to fuck you. Well, this or is he's going to get paid off to take a dive. I was, I was going to say, this is fascinating because Tyra Woodley is basically saying that there's only one person that he wants, or, or he, he, he wants you, and he doesn't want to hear any other name. So he's very set on fighting you next. But you're saying, uh, is it fair to assume that that ship has sort of sailed? You're targeting Usman now, and then that Woodley fight won't happen? Yeah, I mean, I begged for Woodley. I wanted to fight him for so many years, you know, four years. I prepackaged that fight, you know, calling him out, you know. He's too busy with this fucking shitty-ass rap career, and now he's broke, so he needs a big fight because his rap career ain't going nowhere. And, and TMZ fired him because they were sick of him talking about the Kardashians. They, they couldn't keep airing the same episodes every week. So, you know, that ship is sailed with Tyrone Woodley. I, I got bigger and better things in business to handle, and that's what Marty Fake Newsman. I was willing yeah, to man. save the day for the UFC and step up on six days' notice to fight Woodley, but with a full camp, I, I want my title shot, and I want Marty Fake Newsman. <laughs> Tell you what, man, the Kardashians have put a lot of athletes out of business. Tyron Woodley, just another example of that. Let me just ask you this, though, man. A lot of people, obviously, are talking about that Masvidal is getting the next title shot. We've seen reports. It looks like the deal is still going to come together. What is your response to the fact that he's likely to get the next title shot? Is it a situation where you wait until that fight happens? Or will you sort of be forced to fight again because these guys are going to be fighting for the title next? Let's, let's be honest, you know, guys. Because uh, that's what Submission Radio is all about, real news, honesty. Mm, you know, thank they've you. been talking about, they've been fight, they've been talking about this fight with journeyman George Masvidal, aka the Street Judas, against Marty Fake Newsman for two, three months now. Why has this fight not been signed? Because Colby knows exactly what's been going on and called it from the start from the media. I told the media, I said, hey, journeyman George Masvidal scared to fight Marty Fake Newsman. He doesn't want to fight him. He wants more money than he's worth. He's going to wait out to try and get the Connor fight, and he's going to realize that he overplayed his hand, and he's an overhyped job. He hit lightning in a bottle. No one's going to care about him in a couple months. But, you know, yeah, they're talking about the fight, but I don't think it's ever going to happen. I hope it does. You know, I'd love to fight the winner. It's, it's an easy fight. But, you know, I think I deserve my rematch. Go look at that. Go watch that tape of what happened on December 14th, you know. One of the big, biggest shows of the year. 
you know, sold out arena. People want to see this and they know how I got fucked. They know that, you know, I had to face some adversity and, and I got cheated and I got screwed, but you don't see me complaining. I'm out here. All I want is my rematch. I'm not complaining. I'm not making excuses. I just want to show the world who the real champion is. And that's me. Hmm. I, I think the, the I think the rematch between yourself and Usman is is something that people definitely want to see at some point. I'm just wondering, have you spoken to the UFC a, about this plan, and have you sort of gauged you know their reaction? I know, like Dennis mentioned, obviously they're sort of in the middle of negotiations for Usman and Masvidal, but have have you run this past them, and and what do they think about you jumping in? Yeah, they, they like the idea. They you know they saw with their own two eyes. They're not blind. I mean, I, I hope not, but. Uh, some of them, you know, they saw what happened. You know, I, I won that fight. I was winning 24 minutes of that fight. In the last minute, uh, Mark Goddard wants to rob me and, and stop the fight, you know, which, which is complete bullshit because I told him in, their, in, in the locker room, I said, Mark, don't you stop this fight at any moment unless I'm completely dead and unconscious. Otherwise, this is what I signed up for. I signed up to be a professional fighter, to get locked in the octagon and to kill or be killed. And neither one of those happened. I was killing and I wobbled Usman multiple times and I was winning you know, three, four rounds out of that five-round fight, and they were about to wrap that belt around me again. But Mark Not So Goddard got paid off by somebody in the UK who who must be a big fan of Mike Bisping or Daryl the Doughboy Till. So you know <laughs> that's why he got paid off. Man, I'll tell you what, this is this is a whole conspiracy theory that just goes deeper and deeper, and deeper. Let me ask you this though. If you are fighting, uh, let's say uh, for some reason the UFC does put together this Mazadal Usman fight because it does look like it's next. If you had to guess who you'd be fighting out of that, who would be the champion? Who do you think is going to win between Mazadal and Usman and be your next opponent for the title? Yeah, I'll, I'll give my rematch with Marty Fake Newsman one way or another. He, he's got nowhere to go. You know, we we will settle this. There's there's still there's still. 50 more minutes of fighting, man. We still got 10 more rounds of this. You've only seen round one. This, this is. We only have one battle. The war is still to come. He has not seen the best me yet. He's Marty Fake Newsman beat me on my worst day when he was on his best day, and he didn't even beat me. He had to have an incompetent, incompetent ref. He had to have incompetent calls, and he had to have a bullshit fake fight, fake ref, and fake stopping. So I'm gonna get my rematch with Marty one way or another. Everybody knows journeyman George Mosfidal has no takedown defense. He's not a complete mixed martial artist fighter. You saw when he fought guys like Damian Maia, he got beat up. He got exposed by Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. He was getting beat up by nobody's name, Rodrigo Dam, an inverted triangle by a Toby Imada. What's a Toby Imada, guys? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just wondering, Colby, uh, as far as like a, a return time frame for you, when, when do you see that happening? I know that with this whole coronavirus thing, we... Everyone's kind of in the dark, but I'm just wondering if you have any kind of like loose plans where, where you can look at, you know, sometime later in the calendar year for when you would like to return. And uh, I'm just wondering, would you be open to fighting in an empty arena? Because I feel like you versus Usman, you versus Woodley, you versus anyone in the division, it, it kind of needs to have a crowd, you know, especially for your entrances. Yeah, you know, the good thing is that President Trump has everything in control in America. So I already know that in a couple of weeks, everything's going to be back to normal and we can get back to doing what we do best, putting on shows and, and entertaining the fans around the world. So, you know, the thing about me is I stay ready year round, like I've told you guys in the past. And if the UFC calls me up on a week's notice, just, you know, just like they just did last week, I'm ready to go. I stay ready. I'm preparing every single day. I'm getting better and I stay in good cardio shape. You know, I, I have a lot of cardio that I'm always practicing in the bedroom. So my bedroom cardio is at all time, all time high. And it's just going to translate to my championship rounds cardio. So, you know, I, I, I prefer to get back in there is the sooner the better, but we just don't know how things are going to go. So we just have to take them day by day and, and see how things play out. But, you know, yeah, I, I feel like we would be robbed if the, if the fans weren't in the arena when I was fighting, you know, I was willing to go when there was no fans because I wanted to save the day. I wanted to save the world from what's going on right now. People are betting on sports. Our people are betting on the weather. <laughs> I, I see my friend was freaking out the other day. He was like, what the fuck? I bet on the, the weather to rain. Why did it not rain? I was like, dude, you need something better with your life, man. I need to come back and save the sports world and, and, and entertain the people. Because if they're betting on the weather, man, they need something better to bet on. So, you know, I'm, I could fight in empty arena, full arena. It doesn't matter. I'm just here to fight. I'm here to make the sport great again. And I'm here to make the people happy again. Mm. A couple of good questions before we let you go, Colby. First of all, Khabib uh, versus Tony, do you believe this fight happens? What do you what what is, what is your prediction? 
I do not believe the fight happens. I think the fight is cursed. And, uh, yeah, I think the, the fight's cursed, and it's always been cursed, and it's just never going to happen, I guess. It's such a shame mm -hmm. because, obviously, along with, you know, the rematch between you and Usman, you know, Tony and Khabib is just a fight that, obviously, all the fans want to see. If it does happen, maybe on, I don't know, submarine in the Pacific Ocean or some kind of raft floating around in the Atlantic where, where there's no rules, who, who would you sort of give the edge to in that fight? Oh, man. Yeah, that's a tough one. I, I really don't know. I think it uh, it's a good stylistic matchup. They both have uh, skill sets against each other, do well against each other. Tony has a submission, some elbows, you know, some decent uh, abilities to beat Khabib, but Khabib's pressure and his wrestling might be too much for Tony. So I don't know. That's what makes the fight so good is that you, you don't know which way it could go. You know, both guys are crazy in their own right, and, and uh, they're little lightweights, but, you know, they can fight for little kids. Mm. And finally, oh, as we of light, speaking of lightweights, I just want to take this moment, guys, to apologize real quick. I want to apologize to my teammate, Dustin Poirier. I, you know, I broke a promise to my agent, Dan Lambert, and I, I, I really do feel bad, man. I feel ashamed. Yesterday, mm -hmm. I was asked a question by Helwani about Dustin, my teammate, and uh, I kind of lost my cool. I was, I was too busy spitting fire on the world, and I was so hyped up about the Woodley fight that, you know, I kind of want to walk on Dustin. I just, you know, I just want to say that I'm sorry, Dustin. You're still my friend. We can be friends. I'm sorry about hurting your feelings and saying some words in the past that might hurt your feelings. Uh, and, uh, you know, business goes back to usual at American Top Team. I want to have a civil civil gym, and I don't want there to be drama or beef in the gym. I, I want to keep things civil. And if any of these guys want to come fight me, anybody out there, you, you know where to find me. We can fight for a lot of money in the octagon, but why aren't these guys talking about fighting me in the octagon? They just keep talking about fighting me in the street. Wow. An apology from Colby Covington. This is this is a, a massive rarity. This is like the exclusive of all exclusive. Just wondering mm. sort of what what made you want to sort of apologize? When did you start first thinking about, you know, settling settling this with, you know, your good friend Dustin Poirier? Yeah, you know, I, I, I never apologize and I can't believe I'm doing it here today with you guys. But, you know, mm. that's how much trust I have in you guys and faith in you guys. And, uh, you know, what made me want to apologize is I, I'm really apologizing to Dan Lambert. I broke a promise. Mm -hmm. You know, we made a promise that, you know, he's in a different weight class. He's a lightweight. I'm a welterweight. Uh, you know, what our business and our paths are not going to cross. So there's no reason to talk about each other. Let's let's keep everything, you know, normal at the gym. And, and guys can interact and train and, and they can hate each other. But we have enough space at the gym where there shouldn't be any problems. Let's just handle our business. And. And I broke that promise with Dan, and I told him I wasn't going to talk about Dustin. He's not going to talk about me, and, you know, I'm ashamed, man. I'm usually uh, uh, not like this, but, you know, I'm a man to admit when I'm wrong, and I'm wrong. I made a mistake. I'm just like every other American out there. We make mistakes, and, and the, the more important thing is that we learn from our mistakes, and I've learned from my mistake, and I, I'm going to be better. I'm sorry, Dan Lambert. Sorry, Dustin. Love you guys. America top team forever. Mm -hmm. And just quickly, as we wrap up, Colby, I mean, if if you see Dustin next or if Dustin does listen to this, what's your message to him? Do you want him to come over? Do you want him to speak to you? Do you want to sort of somehow mend this whole thing in person? What What's the plan from here? Yeah, you know, I'd like to sit down with him, have a little chat, you know, speak to him eye to eye, you know, get a gauge and feel for how he's feeling and thinking and, and let him get some things off his chest, you know, and then, and then me rebuttal and tell him the truth and, and let me get some things off my chest where, I, where I believe, you know, we're both stubborn in our own ways and, and uh, you know, we're hard headed and we're both fighters and we love to fight. So let's just, let's just worry about fighting and, and preparing for our fights. He has a big fight coming up with somebody and, you know, I'm worried about getting my rematch and getting my belt back. So, you know, let's just go our separate ways and, uh, let, by, let, let bygones be guy, bygones. And, and while, while you're sort of talking about ATT, what about a couple of the, these other people you've had beef with, with guys like Jorge Masvidal or uh, like Ioana Andrejcik? Are you trying to sort of mend fences with all of them or is it just Dustin to this one? Nope, just Dustin. Uh, What's your message to, the, to Jorge and Ioana <laughs> if they're listening? Uh, what's my message to Jorge, journeyman George Masvidal, a.k.a. Street Judas, the guy who tried to stab me in the back for, for money and business. He, you know, you got your ass whooping waiting, buddy. You know, you got your, your 10 seconds of fame. They're up. You hit lightning in a bottle, you know. But let's look at your record, buddy. You got double-digit losses on your record. You're a 50-50 average mediocre fighter. Stop acting like you're so great. You ain't great. You know what happens when we used to train for the last eight, nine years. 
It's never been one second where you ever, ever beat me. So, you know, if you want to get embarrassed in front of the world, let's do it. Because, you know, George keeps talking about wanting to fight in the street. It's like, dude, if we fight in the street, who's going to pay your medical bills, George? At least if we fight in the UFC octagon, I'm going to break your jaw. I'm going to rearrange your face and the UFC will cover your medical bills. So let's leave our business in the octagon. But he, he don't want to fight me in the octagon. He knows better than that. And as far as Joanna Jordacek, you know, his little side piece that they got a little fling going on right now, I could give a fuck less about her. She's she's washed up. Nobody cares about her. She used to be the boogie, the boogie woman. Now she's the booby woman. You know, look at her face. She got her face rearranged. And I called it. Uh, in the beginning of the week, I, I put a video out the week before a fight. I said, hey, guys, Joanna's going to get her. Joanna wants an apology for me. So here I am for my apology. Joanna, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you had to get your face rearranged and everybody's going to get rich at mybookie.ag. And that's exactly what happened. I got rich. <laughs> I made a Rolex off of Joanna Janacek's bitch ass. Well, well, there you guys go. Of course, you can follow the man at Colby Cov MMA. He is the DTFC, Donald Trump's favorite champion and we do appreciate you coming into the program colby we we hope to see you back in there sooner than later and uh, always always a memorable time having you on the program stay away from those uh, coronavirus ladies as well you might have to reduce the pool for the next couple of months i'm afraid <laughs> to say i'm quarantining from all from all these hoes out there i'm just i'm trying to get back in that ufc octagon as soon as possible thanks colby appreciate it all right boys be good